Um, don't be a my mom, mom, every time we go to my grandmother's country club, <laughs> my grandmother will be like, Mom, let's go! Before they, my parents obviously divorced it. Um, so, I think we will get started here. Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us on this Thursday drizzly evening. My name is Rebecca Banas. I am the Director of Marketing Outreach and Events at Wild Care. We're very excited that you have decided to join our talk this evening with uh, Nancy Bradford, who is an amazing travel specialist, and she's gonna share some facts with us. And we also have Lisa from National Geographic, who is going to share some factoids and some fun stuff about traveling with us and helping wild care when you go to the Galapagos. We also have our di executive director, Stephanie Ellis, on our call this evening. She will answer any questions about her trip. And if you missed her recent talk, she will be offering it again next Thursday. You can always email me and I can sign you up for that at any time. Again, my name is Rebecca. You can email me at events at wildcarecapecod.org. And before we get started, I will remind you that wild care is a nonprofit. So if you have a little extra, have you visit our website, wildcarecapecod.org, and click that Donate Now button. Or if you'd like to give us your time, we're happy to have you volunteer now as well. So without further ado, I'm going to let a few more folks in, and I'm going to turn this over to Nancy Bradford. Welcome, Nancy. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you for having me, and welcome, everybody. Uh, so glad you could join us this evening. And... Um, my name is Nancy Bradford, as Rebecca said, and I own Nomadic Travel Company. I've been here on the Cape since the uh, early 1980s, and I've been in the travel business since the early 80s, taking some years off to raise my children. But I'm back, back to it now. Uh, a little quiet, I will admit, this year, but it's going to bounce back next year. Uh, they're saying cruise lines are already up by 170% for next year. So it's, it's going to be a big travel year. Um, anyway, uh, this evening, I'm proud to introduce uh, Lisa from Lindblad Expeditions and National Geographic. Lisa's from Australia. I think you'll be able to pick, on, pick up on that from her accent. <laughs> uh, so Lisa has traveled to all seven continents, and she's been to the Galapagos numerous times. And she's going to give a, a wonderful presentation this evening on uh, all about our cruise. And um, for Lisa, it's always been about uh, getting there, but now it's all about the destination, which I totally agree. And I have also been to the Galapagos myself and can't say enough wonderful things about it. Um, and then after Lisa's done, I will follow up and talk about travel insurance and some of the um, other items on that are must know items for the upcoming trip. So anyway, here's Lisa. Thank you for attending tonight. Wonderful. Thank you. I'm going to share my screen. Let's get this up and going. Actually, before I do that, let me do this. Give me one second. We'll get it all working. Uh, screen to share from the beginning. Come on. There you go. Okay. So um, Nancy, if you'd like to nod and tell me you can see that script. Excellent. I love it when a plan comes together and um, everything works on Zoom. So yes, my name is Lisa Bain with Limblad Expeditions National Geographic and we're very excited that Wildcare has chosen to explore the Galapagos Islands with us. It's a place that's extremely close to our hearts at Limblad Expeditions. If you don't know where the Galapagos is, just a little lesson. It's off the coast of Ecuador. It's a selection of wonderful islands. Each of these are volcanic in nature. And so every one of them is very different from a geological uh, formation. So as one would be formed, it would then move around and away from the fissure and another one would be formed. So every one of these islands is a little different. Some are red sand, some are white sand, some are black ribbon lava. Every one of them has a very unique character unto itself. And that's one of the reasons that you want to move when you're in the Galapagos. So every night we'll be moving and every morning we'll wake up somewhere new and have the chance to explore that particular ecosystem. Um, and the endemic wildlife of the Galapagos is just so unique. And some islands have their very own endemic wildlife that is just for that island. But it is a remarkable place. And of course, it's famous because of this young man, Charles Darwin, and the voyage of the HMS Beagle back in September of 19, 1836. Um, 
so we're in the right month, just the wrong year. Um, but, you know, it, very exciting for him to be there. And he wasn't on the ground all that long during his visit to the Galapagos, but he was able to take a great deal of samples. And it was those samples that in the years further on would be the basis of his theory. And so we do get the chance to talk about that while we're on board. We talk about his thoughts, what's happening in the scientific community on Galapagos today. Um, and the reason that Limblad Expeditions is in this part of the world is because of this gentleman here. This is Lars Eric Lindblad. And Lars, back in the 50s, was an explorer in his own right. And he was going to some pretty remarkable places. And even back then realized that they were suffering from wildlife and habitat degradation. And he realized that without a voice, they, these remarkable places probably would not be available to us two generations down the road. And so Lars Eric came back to the US and he realized if he could take other like-minded travelers with him, impassion them, they would come back as a voice for the preservation of the places they saw. And so that is why Limblad Expeditions, it, 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 that's why we exist. It is to take people, to educate, to get them excited and impassioned so they will help us care for the places that we visit all around the world. And our very first trip to the Galapagos, the, actually the very first trip of any company to the Galapagos was in 1967. It's really not that long ago. Um, and, and the changes since then, the, the removal of a lot of non-endemic species. Today, you're seeing a more pristine Galapagos than you were 30, 50 years ago. And so it's really exciting for us to be a part of that protection of these remarkable islands. Now you hear that word National Geographic Society. We have an alliance with the National Geographic. We've been with them for about 16 years. We're extremely proud that they chose us as an alliance partner, which means that Limblad Expeditions, they're our ships, but we travel in tandem with the National Geographic. Their knowledge, their data supports our expeditionary teams and also allows us our photography program and our family program. So it's a wonderful, a wonderful program that allows us to raise funds for the National Geographic and support their endeavors around the world. So let's talk about the exciting thing, your date. So the trip that we have is October 22nd through the 31st of 2021. It's really not that far away. It's what, 13 months. It's 10 days, nine nights. So that's from the day you leave home till the day you come back. So 10 nights in its entirety. And it's going to be aboard the Limblad National Geographic Endeavour 2. And I will show you the ship um, so that you get a better feel for her as well. I wanted to give you an idea of what the weather will be like when you're down now. Now you're on the equator. So there's a, what we call a drier season and then a greener, wetter season. But there's really not a huge huge differentiation. We're traveling in October, so we're in that June, December dry season. Okay, it's a little cooler, not as much rain. It's, it's more lush on the tops of the mountains and a little drier down around the coast. You're still gonna get showers in the middle of the day. Um, if you were traveling January through May, a little bit more rain, hotter temperatures when you're out hiking. I will tell you, we have wetsuits and all the gear on, the, on board the ship. So when you're snorkeling, you will wear your wetsuits. What's really interesting about Galapagos is because of those deep, cold currents like the Humboldt and the Cromwell, you're pulling up cold, cold, deep water to feed that marine environment. So it doesn't matter what time of year you go, you need a wetsuit. It's going to be chilly in the water. So make sure you wear them. As you jump out, we've got nice warm towels for you to snuggle up in. But you will enjoy every moment when you are in the water. So when you head down from the US into Guayaquil, which is a wonderful little city, right, a port city, we're going to be staying at the Hotel Oro Verde. It's right downtown. It includes complimentary Wi-Fi. You've got a bar fridge with sodas in it. It's got lovely access to the city, but you are going to get in, in late in the afternoon. Our welcome team will be there with warm, cool towels and a drink and your, your keys. You'll go straight up to your room. The next morning is usually pretty early because we want to get you up, get you out to the charter flight. Our charter bus will take you and then you'll be winging your way out to the Galapagos. And what's really cool is the Galapagos and their focus on really caring for the environment. And so this is Boulter's Seymour Airport. This is just the most amazing little airport. It's the Galapagos Ecological Airport, and it is the gateway to the islands. Now that's on Boulter Island. So that's where we're going to be starting. And it looks very, very, the first time I went to Galapagos, this really threw me because you expect it to be lush and green, but it was very, it's a very dry, arid little island. And as I said, 
every island is very different, very unique. So we land here. This, this airport in itself is just such a cool experience. So, you know, take some time, get to understand how this environmentally sensitive and friendly airport works. We're then going to pick you up. You'll go through customs. All of your park fees are paid for. You come out the other side and you'll see someone with one of these wonderful vests or a shirt on that says Limblad Expeditions. We'll whisk you onto the bus and down to the jetty where you'll get your first lesson in how to put on a life jacket and get in a Zodiac. Um, by now, your bags are whisking their way to the ship. We will then get you out to the ship, which is the National Geographic Endeavour 2. She's a 96 guests. She's been with us for three years. She's a beautiful, beautiful platform for exploration. This is your main uh, lecture area and main um, uh, public space on the ship. We don't believe in lecture halls. There's a reason for that. We believe that it's a community of like-minded guests traveling together. And so in this la main lounge, there is a central focus on what we call the circle of truth in the middle. And that circle of truth is where our expedition team members and leaders will come every night. All of our guests will gather around in a circle and we will get the opportunity to talk about what did we see today? What did we learn? What wildlife did we experience? What, was your, what were your thoughts on what we saw? A little bit of the history, maybe have our National Geographic certified photo instructor come up and talk about how to best use your equipment if you're doing some snorkeling with it or you want to photograph birds. So this is every evening that recap is extremely important but it's also an opportunity for dialogue and back and forth between not only our expedition team but our guests because it really is about the community. And then it's all about the ship. She's bright and airy. Every room has big picture windows or all the way up to suites on the top floor with ceiling to floor glass. It is about airiness, brightness. But here's the thing. When you're on an expedition, the last place you want to be is in your guest room. This is where you lay your head and have a little sleep. It is not where you spend your time during the day. Um, but they are beautifully appointed. Everything you need for storage, all of the electrical outlets for your camera gear, your computers. Um, so all that's taken care of. Amazing dining, sustainability is at its very core, and I'll talk about that in a moment, but wonderful, warm service, very relaxed and casual, no dressing up. Very, this is an expedition after all. Um, and you have a fitness center and you have a spa. So you can have a massage if you want to when you get back from a long day of hiking or kayaking or paddle boarding. Um, Anna Estevez puts together our sustainable cuisine on our ships. For the longest time, really since the very beginning, we have believed that you buy local, support local producers, put money back into the local community, build up their businesses, but it also brings that lush, really vibrant flavor of the places you're visiting. And in Ecuador and Galapagos in particular, this is really important. If we're able to buy locally out on the islands, it doesn't have to be flown in. And whenever you fly food into the Galapagos, there's an awful opportunity for bugs to come out there. And so we want to make sure we keep this area as clean from pests as possible. And so buying local is, is extremely important to us. Now, the expertise of our veteran staff is very, very important to us. These are men and women who are so passionate about the Galapagos. Um, I, I like to say it's about their good graces. You can have a PhD and not be the most approachable, but you can have a PhD and be just as excited today as you were 40 years ago when you led a Galapagos expedition. And that's what's so special about people like Celso here on the right, who has been with us for many, many years and just lights up at like a child every time he gets the chance to explain what he's seeing and what he's sharing. And that really comes across to all of our guests on board. Now you're going to have the opportunity to get up in the morning and go out, come back for lunch and then go out again in the afternoon. And as I said, every day you are moving. And so you will sleep, Go to sleep, wake up at a new island. So that's the beauty of being on a ship in the Galapagos, making the most of all of these different islands that you'll visit. You'll have the chance to perhaps this morning go out for a Zodiac safari or maybe a short or long hike. We know that not one size fits all. There's always going to be options. You may have a few in your group that are long hikers. They want to do a longer hike or perhaps a couple that just want to amble along the beach with our National Geographic Certified Photographer or perhaps just do some kayak. Lots of opportunities for snorkeling, shallow water snorkels out to very deep water snorkels. But the marine biodiversity is absolutely spectacular. And we will provide you with all of your snorkel gear. That is all there the first day, 
you try it on, get fitted, and then that is yours for the week. Um, along with that, we have really cool equipment on, our board, on board our ship, like our video microscope. So you can see down to the plankton level what is happening around our vessels. There's also a videographer. And the videographer's job is to film just that departure. And so at the end, there's this amazing National Geographic quality um, video that you're able to take home of your experiences and all the new friends that you've made during your Limblad expedition. So of course, this is a Zodiac. This is how we get you ashore. This is how we take you onto these islands. You're going to have lessons in how to board them. There's a specific way we hold hands that makes it nice and safe. You get in, you sit down, and off we go. Makes it very, very easy and quick to unload and load our ships. Our photography program with our National Geographic Certified Photographers is designed not just for SLRs, but cell phones. We actually did the other day a brilliant cell phone workshop for iPhones. Um, so, you know, we believe that no matter what you're using to capture your images, there is a way to improve and to help you take back some of the most amazing photos of your life. And that's paramount to us, those memories that you're able to take home with you. Now, if there are any families that were thinking of traveling, um, we do have amazing program through the National Geographic, which is called our Global Explorers Program. That's aimed at our under 18 year old guests. And they get this amazing field notebook and they get special activities that they go out and explore. They learn to drive a Zodiac. Every parent, every grown up wants to do that. Um, but it is an opportunity for them to really embrace being an explorer in their own right. And the one thing I'll tell you, every one of you that goes with the, the group to Galapagos, make sure you take the time to go and spend with our team up in the, on the bridge. We have an open bridge policy. It's the best seat in the house. You get to learn from our captains and our teams what it's like to live and work around these remarkable islands. So take a few moments, grab a coffee, grab a wine after dinner, go upstairs, meet the captain and the team. And as I said, Wellness is a huge part of what we do. So there are stretch classes every morning, very early. Now here's the trick. In your cabin, there will be a little switch. If you wanna get up early, you click that switch and you'll get the early morning wake up call. If you don't, turn it off and then you'll just get the main call for breakfast. But the stretch classes on the back deck, I can tell you, early morning, sun's coming up, birds, you know, blue-footed boobies flying by, dolphins in the water, green sea turtles off to the left. It is a most amazing wake-up call to be on the back deck with our team. So take advantage of every moment you can while you're on board the ship. So we've talked about the ship and that you'll be off all day, back at lunch, then heading out again. Um, what's really important is to understand that your expedition leaders are going to take you ashore in small groups. So even though the ship is small, you're going to come down into even smaller groups because we want to have the least amount of impact on the wildlife as possible. And that also allows you to really have um, the most amazing opportunity to see the wildlife up close. So this first photo here is actually on North Seymour, which will be one of the first places you visit on day one. And North Seymour is amazing for marine iguanas, for seals. It is also one of the places that we get to see a lot of these guys, which is a frigate bird. Um, this is a, a male frigate bird. He's all pumped up. Um, these guys, when they're breeding and they're fighting over nesting materials, um, it's a lot of fun to watch. They love to steal from each other. They're kleptoparasitic, which means stealing. Um, and bird A will be stealing from bird B while B, bird B is stealing from bird A. I didn't say they were particularly smart, but from a photographer's standpoint, it is just the most amazing place to be able to sit and take images. Now, as I also said, you're going to get the chance for short hikes and also longer walks. So make sure each evening at recap, you ask questions, you figure out which you want to do the next day and sign up for them. This is one of the longer hikes on Isabella, um, but it is the most wonderful view at the top. And I will tell you, our expedition team is so good at knowing when to say, put the cameras down, stop talking and just take in your surroundings. And you can listen to the silence of the Galapagos. It just, it's, a, it's a wonderful gift when you're told to stop and just take it in. And this was one of those moments when we were up on the top. So some of the iconic wildlife, of course, marine iguanas. There are a couple of the islands. Well, one island in particular we go to where, honestly, there are thousands of these guys. You think it's black lava. 
it is black lava, but then it's also hundreds, thousands of these marine iguanas and they excrete salt out their nose. And so they have this white mucusy salt that they're pushing out through their noses to get the salt out of their system. And so you hear this kind of snappy sound. Um, and it is just amazing to watch these remarkable iguanas who have, have really changed to be able to eat the moss off the bottom of the ocean floor around the islands and then come back on shore. Now, at different times of the year, their coloration changes. Um, and so there's there's six very similar subspecies of marine iguanas. They're all a little bit different from different islands. Um, and as I said, the adults are black most of the year, but the males do change color during mating season for different subspecies. Um, and they will get this green and brick red to bright green look, and we call them Christmas iguanas, but they're just, it's really, really cool to see. Now, of course, one some of the birds that everybody wants to see when they go to the Galapagos, the blue-footed booby and the red-footed booby. So on the left and in the middle, that's a blue-footed booby with two chicks on the right, which is an interesting photo to see because often they will kick one of the chicks out of the nest and you'll end up with just the one. Um, there's also a third booby that we will see. Um, and that is the, they have the, the black mask. So you've got the blue-footed, the red-footed, and now I'm forgetting my third booby. It'll come back to me in a minute. Um, but these guys are just the most amazing little pranksters to see on the ground. And you will get inches of feet from them. And they're not concerned about you. They have absolutely no fear of you. Um, of course, we see a lot of Darwin's finches and those lovely little yellow warblers. Um, and they will come and land, honestly, on the end of your camera. Um, we have mockingbirds down here. And I was on one of the islands one day and this woman had her huge zoom lens trying to get a photo of mockingbirds in a tree. And as she put her camera down, she realized one was sitting on the end of her zoom lens. <laughs> so, you know, it, it is not a place that you need big lenses. The wildlife is right here. We we have photographed raptors and trees on the beaches within five feet, 10 feet. Um, and so, you know, this, this wildlife is not afraid of you. So it is the most remarkable experience to be so close to the, to, so close to them. Um, this is a wet landing. You'll hear this a lot when you get on the ship. We're going to have a wet landing tomorrow. That means your feet are going to get wet. If you follow all the instructions on how to get off and on the Zodiac, your bottom will not get wet. So make sure you listen. You're always going to lift your feet over the edge and then stand straight up. But I will tell you, make sure you have some Ziploc bags or waterproof camera bags because you want to keep all your equipment safe in your backpack uh, until you come ashore. And then bring your walking shoes and put them on. But this is a wet landing and you'll be doing quite a few of these during the week. Um, you'll also be in the water a lot. Lots of opportunities for snorkeling. Seals love it when you get in the water. They're so playful. They'll be swimming around you, blowing bubbles at you. You'll also get the chance to swim with green sea turtles. Um, there are some occasions where you'll be surrounded by 20 or 30 of these. Uh, they're not particularly smart. They will come straight up under you. So you have to watch where they are and make sure that you're staying out of their way. But to be in the water surrounded by this kind of wildlife and then have um, cormorants diving next to you or blue-footed boobies in the water and then to see marine iguanas off to the left feeding on the algae, all of this happening right around you from a quick um, snorkel is, is really quite remarkable. You will also have the opportunity, hopefully, to snorkel or see the Galapagos penguin. These little guys can live down here because of those cold currents, that cold or water. They are so quick. It's so hard to get a photo. This is probably one of the better ones. <laughs> they tend to flit in and flit out pretty quickly, um, but they're little pranksters. And to be close to them and see them is really quite a unique opportunity. Of course, Sally Lightfoot crabs, another famous inhabitant of the Galapagos Islands. Um, there they are. Um, and so just great for photography. This is one of those opportunities you'll have with our photographers on board or our naturalists, our marine biologists. You'll be in the field, the chance to stop and learn on site. Now you will spend a day going to the Darwin Center and the Darwin Center is going to allow you the opportunity to understand how they have really helped these amazing giant tortoises. If you don't know the history, um, back when the Spanish were coming through the islands, they would pick up giant tortoises as a food source. A giant tortoise can live for about two years in the hull of a ship with no food or water. 
And so rather than having donkeys and goats and pigs that required all food and water, they would take back giant tortoises. So they decimated the large tortoise per population. And then they offloaded their donkeys and their pigs and their goats, which crushed a lot of eggs, ate a lot of the foliage down low. So the, the remaining tortoises also suffered. So with the removal of a lot of those non-endemic species, we've really seen the numbers come back and the Darwin Center collecting eggs, bringing them in, hatching, then releasing them back into the wild. And finally, we're starting to see live births on some of the islands. Actually, one of the famous tortoises uh, is uh, uh, um, Diego, uh, Super Diego. Um, and Super Diego is Nelly single-handedly helped us um, rebuild the giant tortoise population. He has just recently been re-released back out into the wild because Super Diego was taken from the islands and was in San Diego in the zoo for many years. They brought him back. He helped replenish stocks. And now he is back out roaming the Galapagos Islands. So, you know, fur seals, the Galapagos fur seals, the sea lions, the opportunity to learn and understand the differences and come back each evening to this wonderful vessel with hot showers and great food and that great camaraderie, share your photos, get the chance to learn from folks who may have done the longer hike or done something different during the day. This is going to be active, as active as you want it to be, but take the time to sit back and really take in your environment down here, sit on the beach, seals will come up and sit next to you. Just take a moment to really appreciate just how remarkable these islands are. One of the questions I always get is your packing list. It's kind of important. I will tell you, you will put everything on the bed to pack it in your bag, then take half of it away and put it back in the cupboard. Um, you don't need a lot. Shorts, a swimsuit, most definitely, some light shirts, um, a couple of longer pants for dinner, perhaps, very comfortable shoes, flat shoes for pretty much all of it. Um, don't use Crocs. Uh, sometimes we see Crocs, they're very slippery getting in and out of a Zodiac. Have a good Teva type sandal if you're going to wear sandals. Um, good hiking shoes. Running shoes are just fine on the Galapagos. Um, and bring a wrap. On the ship, of course, is air conditioned. It can be a little cool in the evenings in the dining room or in the lounge. So make sure you've got a wrap. But this is a really great list. You will get this in your digital documents, which is a pack of great information that's going to give you packing lists, reading lists, all of the cool stuff you'll need to make the most of your experience, the suggested camera equipment, um, all of that. So make sure you keep an eye out. And Nancy will be sharing all of this with you. Um, and now Nancy has, of course, the perfect site for you to go to to book your stateroom on this departure so it's www.nomadictravelcompany.com backslash mbg backslash wild care and then of course nancy's number is there so i'm going to leave that up for a moment um, and then i'd love to take any questions if anyone has any I just unmuted myself. We did there she have, is. Yes, hi. Wonderful presentation. Thank you so much, Lisa. Oh my gosh. Makes me want to go back tomorrow. <laughs> Told you. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. Yeah. I have oh, just so many wonderful memories. Uh, we saw little seahorses when we yep. were playing. That was swimming with the penguins. It was just wonderful. Uh, but, you know, we'll attack the elephant in the room and a couple questions about COVID. Uh, mm -hmm. what, uh, what are you uh, doing right now about the, um, what are your plans? Well, at the moment, we're not in the water. Um, as like the rest of the small ship industry, where we've been sitting it out and waiting. Um, the Galapagos is open, and so is Ecuador. Uh, we are not going racing back in there. We, our protocols we've been working on are very, very strict. Um, we are still finalizing those. It, I've, a lot of people rushed to get those out. We felt it was important to dig deeper and have as many layers of protection as possible. And that's not just for our guests but for our expedition team and our team on board, right? So this is our extended family. We want to keep them as safe as humanly possible as well. We have a, a medical team led by Dr. Lorba, um, and we have a doctor on board all of our ships. So there is a medical uh, medical personnel on all, on all of our vessels. Um, and the whole idea is that our guests will be tested before they leave home. They'll be tested again before they're allowed on the ship. So two negative tests will be required. We are the, the world's only 
self-disinfecting fleet. Um, now this happened before COVID. <laughs> so this was, a, this was an interesting decision we made about a year ago. And it was more from a sustainability standpoint. When you are cleaning ships, you're using a lot of, there's a lot of water waste and there's a lot of plastic waste. And we are a carbon neutral, single use plastic free company. And so we were really working hard to figure out how to get rid of plastics. And so we came up with this ACT clean coat system, which is sprayed on every surface on chairs and tables and walls and ceilings and vents and everything. And it is a system that is photocatalytic in nature. So as soon as it is exposed to any kind of light, a desk lamp, sunlight, moonlight, it removes and kills viruses on contact. So all of our ships use this self disinfecting system. So that's the very basis of everything we do on our ships. Um, and from there, it's all of the processes to ensure that all the equipment is covered in this stuff. When guests use our Zodiacs between use, they're wiped down again. There will be no handing of you know dishes around. Everything will be single service. Um, if there's snacks, they'll be single serve. So the whole idea is to create, um, I hate the word bubble. I think we're so going to be sick of bubble by the end of this, but to create a cocoon um, that everyone feels that they're still a part of the experience, but they've got their little areas that are just set for them. Um, but yeah, so we, we look, we've got a lot of protocols in place. We're waiting for the final approval on those from our National Geographic partners, and then we'll be able to release those in their entirety. But yes, it's very important to us from all levels. Oh, good. Good. Thank you so much. Yeah, I was just saying, um, I think small ship cruising and expedition cruising will be the wave of the future to create that bubble. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, I'm going to have a little bit of a joke with you, Nancy, because it's so funny. We've been around for 54 years and, and small ship expeditions for us. We've always, we've always thought we've been the big kids on the block, but we really haven't. But now, of course, it's become this, this main focus. I think you're right. During the pandemic, people had a moment to breathe, to be quiet. And all of a sudden, I think a lot of people have realized how very special it is to be able to do that. And this kind of travel allows for that. So, uh, yeah, exactly. we're very excited that more people might come our way to experience what we offer. Good. And then another um, note I would like to make, too, is if you book by September 12th, you have a wonderful peace of mind um, offer that you can uh, change for any reason and go the following year. Yes. With no penalty. Is it no penalties. Two weeks prior? Correct. Yep. So that's a good reason to jump on and <laughs> reserve it now. Exactly. Uh, also, I also wanted to mention too, if you're single thinking about going, we can match you up with somebody of the same sex. Um, and then if for some reason we can't match you up, um, you don't have to pay the single supplement. Am I correct, correct on that? Lisa? Yeah, so we have a share program. So um, if you are a single who wants to travel and there's a share, there are share options available, we put you in, certainly. Yep. Uh, and then uh, underwater cameras, you don't provide those, do you? No, um, we don't. Yeah. Um, I will tell you, you don't have to spend a lot of money. Um, I see people come with these really expensive underwater cameras with these huge casings and then it, the recap in the evening, some 14-year-old child will get up with their little Fuji yellow instant little tiny camera and they'll have some spectacular photo up close of a seal and someone will be like, oh, I didn't get any like that. Um, <laughs> the most important thing and cell phones too, if you've got, you know, if you've got a really good waterproof case for your cell phone. The, the technology these days, you don't need to spend a lot for great underwater photography. And the other cool thing on our ships is that community of sharing. Um, we do ask guests, you know, if you, if you come back during the day and someone's got a great photo, often people will share images. Oh, I got a great photo of a penguin. Do you want to get a copy of it? Because we have a photo lab on board the ship. Um, and you'll find within your own group, people will be sharing photos and saying, hey, I got this great shot of a Nazca, there it is, Nazca booby. That's the third booby. Um, Nazca booby. How did I forget him? He's my favorite. Um, you know, so I'm, I want to share it with everybody. So, you know, don't panic about going and spending a lot of money on an underwater camera. Um, you know, there's all the, these great little um, cameras that you can buy that you can actually wear on yourself. Those are great, but if you haven't used them a lot and it's a timed thing, often they don't get good photos. Just get a good little Fuji or a tiny little underwater camera. Or they a will GoPro. Do a, 
Yeah, or a little grow or a GoPro, but use your GoPro before you go. One of the biggest yeah. problems we have is people get down there and they're like, I don't know how to turn it on. I don't know. And it's two minutes before we get in the water. Practice in the bathtub, <laughs> practice in the swimming pool, in its case, then you won't be panicked. Yeah, don't be in the bathtub with it. I just saw someone giggle about that, just just in the water. Um, you know, just, but but practice with it so you feel confident and you're not panicked once you get there. I think that's one of the key things to take on. Exactly. And then uh, we just had a couple questions about the gateways, you know, if they're not flying and they're not allowing us to fly in, but it's pretty limited. Just just um, uh, keto uh, and um why kill why kill yep mm -hmm. um the refund policy it's it's uh again as i mentioned sign up by september 12th and you can change it to any Lindblad expedition the following year if you don't feel comfortable going because of covid um deposits due uh at the time to hold your stateroom yeah and any other questions that we're missing you do have, oh, sorry, I was just going to say, you know, there, there is a wonderful global gallery on all of our ships, which um, we actually support women's programs around the world, uh, supporting their arts and crafts. And so when you're on the ship, there are some amazing arts and crafts, but it also means that you can pick up if you forgot to bring a rack or you want something like a hat or an extra um, battery for you, not a battery for your camera, but a card for your camera. There, there is this stuff like that on board the ship. But one thing I will tell you, which is really important to bring, make sure you have an extra camera for your, a battery for your camera. If it runs on, on particular batteries, make sure you have the charger. Um, and also make sure you bring extra cards to load images onto. And if you can, bring your computer or a hard drive to put them on. Um, it, there's nothing more heartbreaking than someone go, records over their card and loses photos. So just make sure you've got all the, the camera equipment. Honestly, the clothes, you can live in a pair of shorts and a nice shirt. The camera equipment is so important if you want to have those great memories when you come home. Exactly. And yeah, pack light and, mm. you know, um, also, there's not very many ATMs down there, so bring cash. Um, it is U.S. dollars. Yep, U.S. dollars, and they need to be crisp, fairly new, crisp U.S. dollars. But don't go all out. There's, there's not a lot to spend money on down yeah. there. Um, and then uh, also shops and things like that. It's not required, but it's always good. I'll be sending a link um, as we go along to sign up for the STEP program, which is, especially in these times, very important to sign up with our government and the links to find out about shots and so forth. But definitely check with your doctor. And uh, there's a very good travel doctor that I see quite a bit on the South Shore. I can give you her name as well. Um, so I will be sending that information. And if you wanna deviate, if you wanna go down early or stay late, uh, visit any of the other countries or areas in Ecuador. I can help you with that as well. I've been to Peru and Machu Picchu is a wonderful extension. It, for it is beautiful. And, oh, and, beautiful. and Quito, I mean, Quito, colonial Quito is such yeah. an amazing city. It's, I always feel sad when people go to Ecuador and they think they've done Ecuador by going to the Galapagos. Ecuador is a place unto itself and Quito is just such a remarkable experience. So if you do have a couple of extra days and Nancy can help you arrange to see more of, of, of Quito and up into Mashpee in those areas, it really is worth the time. Yeah. And another question too, how many other ships might be there at the same time? Thank you, Pamela, for bringing that up. Um, not too many. You'll see a few other ships, a few other groups with, with the guide. Everyone's, there's never more than groups of 12 people, I believe, in the, in the islands. Um, but a few other, but that's why the Galapagos is um, higher, you know, higher than a price than a lot of other places because there's more people that want to go there than there's space. The host Correct. Them. Yeah. The so, National Park is exceedingly well run um, yeah. and they only give out so many permits a year and they dictate where the ships go. And so there's never a, a ship our size or anywhere near our size in the same place as us at the same time. And so you're never going to be coming onto a beach with other people that aren't with our group. 
Um, so it is extremely well run and extremely well managed to ensure that our footprint is very gentle on these islands. Exactly. And no visas are needed at this time. Nope. You know, we always need to keep on top of that because they can change that <laughs> at any time. <laughs> yes. Um, costs are all listed on the website. And um, mm -hmm. cancellation policy, if you sign up after September 12th, um, you know, I'm not sure, Lisa, are you planning on extending that about the COVID? I, I don't believe we are going to extend that at this time. So okay. our normal cancellation policies would apply. It would apply, which is, again, on the website linked, linked to that. Um, yeah, great. I think that's all the questions. Does anybody have any other questions? Pack light. <laughs> yes. Yeah, well, you do, you are taking that smaller flight out to the islands. So, you know, we, we do have and we'll be providing it to Nancy, all your packing requirements for going on the flight. But honestly, every time I go to Galapagos, and I've done it quite a few times, I always come back and there's that little pack of clothes in the corner that has never come out of the bag. And this is from me doing it several times. So just, just know that you can get laundry done on the ship. So it's easy to get laundry done on the ship. It's a very cost-effective way. Make sure you, oh, here's one thing I will tell you. Um, there are some, you know, some little insects that have made their way out to the Galapagos, um, some wasps on some islands. They're not a problem, but they do like bright colors. So try and stay away from wearing, you know, hibiscus red shirts or really bright yellow if you're out there. You know, whites and expeditionary colors are great with roll down sleeves also stopping you from getting burnt, right? Getting some good, you know, um, expedition shirts from REI is a great idea or whatever outdoor store you've got, buy local if you can, that's even better. Um, but that really does help you protect yourself when you're out. It does in a good, good hat too. A couple Very hats. good hat with a string. Yep, with a string. And I also had one of those buffs too that I wore under the water. That was a lifesaver because you know, the sun still hits you when you're underwater. Yeah. So. And, and, a, and a chain on your sunglasses. Yes. I, I am sure if we were to do an extensive dive in the Galapagos, we could make a fortune from sunglasses that have gone over the side of a Zodiac. Same with your cell phone. Make sure they're in floaty bags when you're out on the Zodiacs. There's nothing worse than, oh my gosh, what a great oh, photo. So make sure that they're always in a bag that also has a floaty on it. Floaties. Yeah on everything and you make sure you're wearing your life jacket at all times yeah yep. and the wet suits that are, are help with the buoyancy as well yes and uh yes a doctor on the ship so excellent med medical yep. care and i did just add nancy's email for those of you that might need it and the link to the travel itinerary to the chat if you want to copy and paste that really quickly before we sign off you can Give me a call too, and uh, we'll probably, you know, I think now that everyone's a pro with Zoom, uh, after, you know, we can do a couple of these and just do a Q and A's up until it's time to depart. And as you get closer, Nancy, if folks want to get together who are booked and go over the packing list in more detail and maybe talk about what books to read, I know Jacinta and I would be happy to come back on and spend some more time with the, the, the group and, and chat about their impending departure. Yep. Great. Yes. Perfect. And do you mind if I just add a few ending notes? Yes, please do. Um, so I just, I want to say thank you, Nancy, and thank you, Lisa, for spending time with us this evening, um, and Rebecca for setting us all up. And I want you all to know why I chose National Geographic, because when Nancy and I talked initially about this, you know, there were several other proposals with different um, cruise groups. And first of all, um, I've been on this trip, I've been with Lindblad Nat Geo on the Endeavor 2, and that was just in December, and I already, I can't wait to go back. I wish we were all going this October. Um, and so I know that you're in an absolutely, you, you're going to experience a top-notch trip, a trip of a lifetime. Um, but there are also some other reasons why I chose National Geographic. And for one, I felt um, the 96 passenger boat, you know, for some of you that might seem like a lot of people, but there were always opportunities to have solitude. Um, as Lisa was saying, the stretching in the morning was incredible. 
if you're an early bird, you can get up and you literally are stretching on a mat and you have um, Darwin finches landing on the boat. You have frigate birds on frigate birds on the bow. I am not an early bird and I quickly became an early bird <laughs> on the trip because I didn't want to miss anything. Um, but also when I thought about the people who might come on this trip, uh, wild care followers, um, Nat Geo offers so many different activities while you're on that boat for all ages, all experience levels. And I know I've said this in all, if you've attended my Galapagos talk, but if, you know, if you're not comfortable with deep water snorkeling, there's um, bay snorkeling. If you don't want to snorkel at all, you can kayak. There's um, glass bottom boats, there's the paddle boarding. And so, and there are the long hikes and the short hikes. And just so opportunities for every activity level and age, basically. Um, another important thing to me was that there is a doctor on the boat. And so you don't have to worry if you have an ailment or an illness, you have someone there who's going to take care of you. Um, and another thing is I did not experience any seasickness. And the larger the boat, the less likelihood of that happening. And so if we were on a 16 passenger boat, you know, there's a higher probability of becoming sick and you have no place to go and you don't have a doctor on the boat <laughs> unless you're traveling with, um, you know, Nat Geo. So those are the main reasons why, aside from it's just a trip of a trip of a lifetime, it, it really has changed my life so much that I want to take all of you back there with me. <laughs> So, would you like uh, to come and go on the road with me? <laughs> I would love to. <laughs> I will say one of the things I'll throw in there too, with all because all of those are so important. Um, the other thing is because of the size of the ship, the diversity of the expedition team. You know, you can have ornithologists and botanists and a marine biologist and a naturalist, and so you get this diversity of voices. Um, when you're on a really small ship in somewhere like the Galapagos, you've got one or maybe max two people. Um, and so they tend to be either generalists or you've got an ornithologist and you it's birds, birds, birds. What we want is that diversity of knowledge so that we can help each of you that have different interests learn about this place from, the, from where you're coming from. And that's really important to us. And so that, that in particularly in Galapagos is, is a big part of the experience. I, I agree. I was on a smaller ship, a 16 passenger, and I, I, if I did it again, I would want the larger ship. Um, luckily, we all got along, but boy, you could see a couple personalities. You know, it's nice to have the, the diverse personalities and, as you say, all the different uh, expedition yeah. guides. That, that really adds a lot to it. And we didn't have the paddle boarding or the kayaking yeah. um, or the glass bottom boat. So that's definitely well worth it. For most people, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. Yeah. So you want to do it right. Do it with Lindblad, <laughs> National okay. Geographic. Well, we're very excited. So thank you so much for entrusting us because we do look at this as being entrusted to share these remarkable places. And so we're really excited that you'll we'll be, you'll be aboard with us next October. Yes. Uh, let's see another oh, a couple last minute questions. Uh, what yes, we that? do. <laughs> <laughs> what does solar up, solo upper deck mean? That means a, a soul if you want to be guaranteed your own cabin. Correct. We have dedicated solo cabins if you want to be a solo guest. Yeah. But if you want to, you know, be matched up, then and you know, most of the people that go are like-minded travelers. Very much so, yeah. Do you have a wetsuit that fits me? Five that was my feet. yes, five foot oh, one okay. inch. Okay. <laughs> yes, we do. Great, any other questions? I think you guys actually covered everything. But again, um, the link for the itinerary is right in there and feel free to check that out. Nancy's information is right on that page. If you miss it, it is also on wildcarecapecod.org. You can find it there. Um, yes, Allie, they will absolutely accommodate everyone. Nat Geo is very, very accommodating as I think you're gathering from this wonderful little chat that we just had. Yep, they accommodate special diets and yeah, if anyone is a vegetarian or you have any special dietary needs, 
just make sure Nancy knows beforehand because we will brief our team on board. We are very good at dealing with, you know, celiac disease, any of those things we can accommodate. But the further out we know, the better, because then we can brief our entire team and they're ready to welcome you aboard. Yeah. Great. So I'm going to break the awkward silence and say thank you so much, ladies. What a wonderful, wonderful hour we just got to spend with you. Thank, thank you. you for your time, Nancy. Thank you for your time, Lisa. Stephanie, thank you so much for joining us and adding some of those little tidbits, not just as an explorer, but a traveler. And um, you guys are in for a super treat if you sign on to go on this, to have Stephanie with you. She is one of the most wonderful, exciting people I know to date. So I think at this point, we will wrap it up. Again, if you have any more questions, you can email Nancy. You can always contact us at Wild Care. Our website is wildcarecapecod.org. And I know Stephanie looks forward to seeing every single one of you on the boat next October. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank Good night, you. everyone. Thank you. Thank Take you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>